Spud here with Spud Ink Strength Straps. Today's segment is a little bit different than uh, what we normally do. Normally we talk about a product, uh, we go into that product, uh, we explain it, we show you all the cool stuff about that product and all those things. Today I'm just going to do like a little, a, little, a little different thing and talk to you about some of the things that I do personally to um, recover and some of the things that I have run across over time. Um, back in October, I did a seminar called Be Activated, and um, I found out about it through my good friend JL Holdsworth. And JL was uh, putting on his RPR, which is Reflexive Performance Reset. Um, it's uh, also sort of like the, the Be Activated therapy as well. Um, so I did that in October, and I had such uh, such some magnificent changes and some overall much improved quality of life um, that I felt like it was something that needed to be talked about a little bit in a video. During my time as a powerlifter, I was always in search of a way to recover faster, a way to perform better, and a way not to hurt because, you know, the daily abuse of heavy training all the time um, takes its toll and you're gonna pop stuff, you're, you're gonna tear stuff, you're gonna rip stuff, um, and there was always that search. So I literally spent thousands and thousands of dollars on massages, and I'm gonna use this word, modalities. You know who you are out there. Um, and I spent a whole lot of money on all these different things just so they could recover and perform. It was all about performing, I didn't really, Nothing else really mattered at that time. So, um, but performing, and I did everything I could. So, uh, you know, paying that money for massages was no big deal. But you know, you do have to find a good massage therapist who really understands a lot of different things. Luckily, I had a really good one and some other ones along the way as well. But during that time, um, you know, she helped me get through a lot of meets. She helped me survive a lot of things. Um, I learned a lot about tissue. I learned about, a lot about pliability. I learned a lot about scar tissue. I learned a lot about all these different aspects of tissue that, you know, I probably never would have known had I not ripped and torn so many different things. But had I had be activated or RPR before all this, I doubt seriously if I would have shredded um, a quarter of the things I did and. I don't even know if I would have had any surgeries except for, except for the one on the tricep, which was, you know, something not even lifting related. So uh, the, whole, the whole point is, you know, I know there's more and more things to help you get better, but right now, um, the Be Activated and RPR, if you hadn't heard about it, you really need to check it out. But the basics of, these, of this system is there's a, there's a couple points, two to three points on each part of your body that can release tissue and also activate tissue at the same time so that you can perform better, you can recover way faster. Um, you, don't have to, you don't have to go sit for an hour. I was out at the APF Nationals, APF Equipment Nationals in Florida uh, last week and Spud was out there. We had some lifters. Uh, we also drank quite a few beers and ate some pretty shitty food because that's kind of what we do. Um, but while we were on the break in between the bench and the deadlift at the meet, it was about a 45 minutes, about 45 minutes of downtime. Spud asked me if he wanted to, uh, if I wanted him to go through and do a workup and uh, see if we could get the hip squared away. So we did. Um, he basically told me to lay on the floor and he took his B activated thumb and he jammed it into just about every place in my body that could possibly hurt. Uh, the one thing about these treatments is they're not comfortable. Um, but they are effective. Uh, he used the B activated system on me, not the RPR. Uh, they're similar, but they're different. Um, he worked on me for, I would say, 15 minutes, maybe 20 minutes tops. Um, he worked on certain areas that were specific to what my issues were, my tibia, um, my inguinal, I don't know if I'm saying that right, inguinal ligament. I always say it wrong. Um, he worked on the psoas, he worked on the VMO, and one or two other things, and he did whatever he does. Um, immediately afterwards, I stood up, I felt taller, I was much more relaxed, uh, which kind of we know that after you do the RPR stuff, you feel like that too, but this was more pronounced. 
Uh, but the one thing I noticed that I was walking without a limp and I had absolutely zero pain in my hip. I was gone, completely gone. I did a few squats, uh, full range of motion, no weight, just my body, uh, absolutely no pain. And then uh, the following day, I got up, went to the airport, got on a plane, sat on the plane for three and a half to four hours and got up off the plane with no pain in my hip. And that was last week, so we're now, we're now one full week out of the treatment and I have virtually no pain in my hip. Um, I would say that for about 90% of the day, I'm now about 90% pain free and my movement is better. Uh, I benched yesterday with no pain in my hip, which is a pretty big deal. So the treatment has lasted so far for seven days. I'm not really doing a lot uh, different than I was other than trying to mimic the things that he did to me, which takes about five minutes, which would be you know kind of getting into the areas that he worked with my own thumb. Um, Knowing about the RPR and the B-activated techniques has absolutely changed my warm-ups where I do far less things than I did and I tend to warm up a lot faster and I feel like I'm warmed up better. Um, I think that if you investigate these techniques, you, you should definitely give them a try before you kind of discount them because there's something new coming up all the time. Um, one of the things that I've been saying about RPR specifically is if it does nothing other than gets most people to belly breathe better than they are now, most people breathe in the chest. Uh, so if RPR does nothing but gets you to belly breathe better, it's worth every minute that you spend doing it. Uh, and what I found with the B-Activated is uh, so far, it has taken the pain in my hip away. Today's thing, after all of that, just trying to give you a brief understanding of it, I don't want to go into each point because There'll be so many different views on the subject and then you'll have so many different people have, you know, who just, who just come up and say, you know, who, who want all the data, who want all the scientific crap, who want all that stuff. That's all fine. That's not what I'm here to do. Uh, my only goal is to get better and to eliminate, eliminate as many injuries as possible before they happen. And the other interesting thing about, about the activated RPR is is how awesome you feel afterwards um, you just feel relaxed you feel good you feel prepped and ready to go um, the one of the one of the biggest concepts of, of the system is uh, breathing and I have been doing some things but I never really focused on really diaphragmatic breathing I hope I said that right but I never really focused on it until this system showed me why it was so important. And there's other people out there who've always talked about it, and you know, like I said, we did. I, I did do some things when I was squatting. You know, I didn't even know I was doing these things, but I, I was still doing that. But once I understood about the breathing, then I understood all the rest of the things that go along with the system. The whole idea is to perform the way you're supposed to perform, not compensate in whatever fashion that you do. So, you know, again, I won't go into all that. You know, that's something that you should do yourself. You should check out Be Activated. You should check out RPR. Um, you know, Donnie's Body Tempering, that's also, you know, you should check that out thoroughly. He's, he's covering a lot of the same bases, but um, again, we're just keeping it really simple here. I'm just gonna work on the psoas. I'm just gonna work on the breathing today. Uh, I'm gonna show you the, the just a couple of things that I've learned how to use uh, what I, and what I've taken is the Boomstick by Chris Duffin and Donnie and I take an Indian club and obviously some band stuff that you know everybody's been doing but you know I just sort of create my own system to get all these be activated RPR points so I you know so, so I can still keep them on a daily regiment and keep myself feeling good so first off I'm just gonna I'm gonna plop down here and I'm gonna demo the boomstick, and I'm gonna demo the boomstick working the, the two psoas points. Um, and you know, check it out, and we'll, we'll get over there. So I'm down here uh, on the ground, I'm fixing to do a couple things. Um, this is just a plastic Indian club. Um, fantastic piece, you can get in all kinds of nooks and crannies with this. Um, this is Kabuki's boomstick, you know, brought to you by Duffin and Thompson. Uh, probably, if you don't, if you don't have one of these, there's 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 really something wrong with your gym because this will this thing literally will save your life as far as 
getting into places that you can't get into. And, you know, if you do go learn RPR or be activated, um, you'll be using the heck out of this. So I'm just going to lean back to start with. And the areas that I'm, the areas that I'm talking about here, um, we're just trying to get the so as to work uh, and move freely. So, and a lot of times the so as is a big issue for, for majority of people and you're going to hear a lot more about it um, from everybody. Uh, had you told me this, you know, while I was powerlifting, I would have said, well, you know, you're, you're smoking crack or there's something going on. But after going through the sessions and understanding it, I, I totally get, I totally get the whole thing. You can, um, just by, just by doing a little psoas and a little breathing work, you can have somebody squatting so much better than they normally do because they can actually push back and, and utilize everything they got. So it's just, it's one of those things you have to you have to feel and do you just can't tell people about it so but I'm gonna demo this because um, for those of you out there who have been through the certifications um, or th you know thinking about it obviously these are some techniques and, and you'll find your own because that's what everybody does but this is just an easy way so the first one is um, the, the belly rub down here below the belly button we're just gonna move across we're gonna move across here we're gonna, we're gonna add a little pressure and then we're gonna come across, come across, come across, come across. So we're gonna hit this whole area down here. So I usually just start right in the middle and I'll, I'll rub that part. I'll go up a little bit. I'm always moving it around. Yeah, you know, depending on, depending on how far along you are, if you're really tight and you wanna spend more time, you wanna do 10, 30 seconds with it. Uh, versus, you know, I can get away with five or ten seconds because everything stays so loose because I do it every day. So you push in a little bit, obviously, you push down a little bit, you grab it, and you roll across. Right here, five, four, three, two, one. I'm going to go to the other side. I'm going to do that. So, again, a little bit of pressure. I mean, the stick's going to stick's gonna provide because got weight to it as you can see I'm just dropping it on the stuff but I'm applying a little bit of pressure I really want to wake it up sometimes I'll go a little bit lower and I'll work this area and that's the first part of it so the second part is I'll move this down here so you can see you got your hip bone you got your belly button and you go halfway okay now, at first, you know, Jack's Be Activated Thumb was doing fantastic here. And then Jack's Be Activated Thumb got really tired. And he just really didn't want to do it like that anymore. And the other side of Jack's Be Activated Thumb, this, this twin over here, he doesn't work as well because there aren't that many rotators in this arm. So neither arm want to work that well that long. So this is where I had to invent tools to help me do things and to get down further. So. Obviously, I just let it sit in there first, and you'll feel the tissue fight you a little bit. And what I, what I like to do is I'll take a belly breath, and then I'll go down, and I'll work it. I'll work the area right here. I usually go back and forth. Sometimes I'll move it over a little bit, and I'll do a swirl, just like you would with your thumbs and your fingers. Sometimes I'll do like. I'll do this where I swirl in, you know, when I'm working on somebody or trying to loosen them up. Usually the thumb's more than adequate, but sometimes you've got some people who are a little bit and you gotta, you got to tease them a little bit and get in there. So the basic premise is you just keep going, like I said, 10 to 30 seconds, depending on how pliable your tissue is. Usually, usually um, you can feel it. If you feel like, if it feels like it's kind of like uh, pushing up against you, you know, it's like fighting you a little bit. You're not quite there, you know, so you'll dig in a little bit more. And basically when the tissue stops fighting, and basically, you know, you've reached the point where you, you've gotten as far down as you need to. So then we'll do the other side real quick. Same, same concept. Hip bone. Hip bone. A-S-I-S for all the, the guys right there. And then you'll go halfway. I'll dig in. It's a little aggressive. 
you know, if you got somebody who's not really quite used to it, you can just start gently, work your way in. Some people, some people don't want to let you in, so you just got to be careful. You got to go in. You got to go in the way they want you to go in. Sometimes it's cool and you just go right in, like with Murph. Um, Murph went right in. He fought me a little bit, but then you know I just kind of backed off and then we started over. And it, you know I just kind of swirled my way in until he was ready for me. So as weird as that sounds, like, that's what happens with tissue. So you just don't want it to fight back as much on you. So that's just a couple. That's just the soas part right there. And that's the two points on the soas. Um, the breathing. And again, that's the most critical part of it. I spent, uh, you know, I learned this. I learned this system back in October, and I spent pretty much every second that I could thinking about <sighs> breathing into my diaphragm, breathing into my belly, activating this, and making it part of my everyday life. Because before it was. <sighs> You know, as a chest breather, so when you're a chest breather, you can't get as much oxygen in your system. You just can't do it. Um, and of course, you you know, you when you belly breathe, it's a way to calm yourself down too. When people say take a breath. I mean, that's what they're talking about. You know, sometimes you want to get mad at them and punch them in the face, but the reality is when you take a big belly breath, you're calming yourself down. So. The breathing is an integral part, and I've worked on it since October of last year, which was 2016, uh, through now. And I've, I've pretty much made it a, a daily part of my life. Now I want to work on the part where I can actually perform while I'm breathing into my diaphragm. So the diaphragm moves involve the sternum. You're going to work your way down the sternum. At the Y here, at the bottom of the ribs. You're gonna work out a little bit. Um, you know, most practitioners, they, they don't go as far as I do. I'll keep on digging all the way around because I just like figuring it out. If something feels really tight, I wanna work it. So when I'm working on somebody, I'll start with the breathing. And this is where the Indian Club comes in here. I like this one. And to get this part, because again, this is not very comfortable for me right here, I'll use the Indian Club. And again, it's a 10 to 30 second or whatever you can stand. And the idea is to, the idea is to obviously breathe and breathe into your belly. And what you'll find is if you're feeling around, you'll find that these areas, um, they're what I call I call it muddy, though it should be pretty much just bone and skin there. When you work it and you keep it worked, that's what happens is you, if you have the bony area. Um, when you're trapping things and when you're holding on to things and you're not breathing well, stuff can build up here. So this is where I'll continue to work. And it helps out a lot. I'll work my way down. Sometimes I go a little here. Time to go a little there. But this part of the Indian Club is a fantastic part to work with, with the breathing. This is where I bring the boom stick in. And again, you know, don't go with the boom stick right away. You know, use your thumb for a while until you figure it out, until you learn how. So I'll grab the tissue and I'll pull down like this a little bit. So I'll grab it, and then I'll work this area. And you know, when it's really bad, it'll just sit right there. And then when I start working it, you know, it'll start, pretty much the boomstick will start giving right away. If it's really bad, I'll take big breaths, and then as I'm working it, then I can get in there a little bit more. Obviously, you know, some people aren't going to agree with this technique, and that's okay. you got to find what works for you. I just like it because I can't get in like this as well as I'd like to. So, you got the boomstick with the end right here. It's nice and smooth. You can dig right in there. So, 
So you find your spot and then work your way, work your way down. And after a while, so it, you know, like mine stays pretty soft now. Before it would be like, I couldn't even go in right here. So right there, I've done all the, all the breathing activation that I need. So again, I'm starting right about here. You can go higher if you want to, you don't really need to. And you'll want to break all this and go down. And then you'll want to come down here. Okay, so again, you hook the tissue and you roll up underneath there. Sometimes it's automatic and you just go. Sometimes it takes a little while and you fight with it. So that's, uh, that's a breakdown of the psoas and a little bit of the breathing.